ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वी गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम लास्ट टाइम फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम नाइन्थ कैंटो वी वर रीडिंग फ्रॉम चैप्टर इलेवन लॉर्ड रामचंद्र रूल्स द वर्ल्ड एंड वी हैव सो फार कवर्ड अप टू वर्सेज सिक्स विल ट्राई टू कंक्लूड दिस चैप्टर टूडे So in the last verse, verse six, Prabhupada was telling us in the last lines that aspiring to possess more and more for personal sense gratification is simply ignorance, and this ignorance is conspicuous by its absence from the heart of a Brahman or Vaishnav. So if you are worshiping Vishnu, then you are called Vaishnav. and uh, all the expansions are coming from of the purush avatar are coming from vishnu as only we know that akshay vishnu garbo dakshay vishnu or the kshiro dakshay vishnu so let's begin verse 7 translation o lord you are the supreme personality of godhead who have accepted the brahmanas as your worshipable deity your knowledge and memory are never disturbed by anxiety you are the chief of all famous persons within this world and your lotus feet are worshiped by sages who are beyond the jurisdiction of punishment o lord ramchandra let us offer our respectful obeisances unto you verse 8 Shukadev Goswami continued once while Lord Ramchandra was walking at night incognito hiding himself by a disguise to find out the people's opinion of himself he heard a man speaking unfavorably about his wife Sita Devi verse 9 speaking to his unchaste wife the man said you go to another man's house and therefore you are unchaste and polluted i shall not maintain you any more a henpecked husband like lord ram rama may accept a wife like sita who went to another man's house but i am not henpecked like him and therefore i shall not accept you again question shukadev ko swami said men with a poor fund of knowledge and a heinous character speak nonsensically fearing such rascals lord ramchandra abandoned his wife sita devi although she was pregnant the sita devi went to the ashram of valmiki muni verse 11 when the time came the pregnant mother sita devi gave birth to twin sons later celebrated as love and kush the ritualistic ceremonies for their birth were performed by valmiki muni verse 12 o maharaj parikshit lord lakshman said sorry or lord lakshman had two sons named angad and chitraketu and lord bharat also had two sons named taksh and pushkal verses 13 and 14 shatrugna had two sons named subahu and shrutasena when lord bharat went to conquer all directions he had to kill many millions of gandharvas who are generally pretenders taking all their wealth he offered it to lord ramchandra shatrugna also killed a rakshas rakshas named lavan who was the son of madhu rakshas thus he established in the great forest known as madhuvan the town known as mathura verse 15 being forsaken by her husband sita devi entrusted her two sons to the care of valmiki muni then meditating upon the lotus feet of lord ramchandra she entered into the earth purport it was impossible for sita devi to live in separation from lord, lord ramchandra therefore after entrusting her two sons to the care of valmiki muni she entered into the earth verse 16 After hearing the news of Mother Sita's entering the earth the supreme personality of Godhead was certainly aggrieved although he is the supreme personality of Godhead 
Upon remembering the exalted qualities of Mother Sita, he could not check his grief in transcendental love. Purport, Lord Ramchandra's grief at the news of Sita Devi's entering the earth is not to be considered material. In the spiritual world also there are feelings of separation, but such feelings are considered spiritual bliss. Grief in separation exists even in the absolute, but such feelings of separation in the spiritual world are transcendentally blissful. Such feelings are a way, sorry, are a sign of Tasya Prema Vashyata Sobhava, being under the influence of Haladini Shakti and being controlled by love. In the material world, such feelings of separation are only a perverted reflection. Verse 17, the attraction between man and woman or male and female always exists everywhere, making everyone always fearful. Such feelings are present even among the controllers like Brahma and Lord Shiva and is the cause of fear for them. What to speak of others who are attached to household life in this material world? Purport. As explained above, when the feelings of love and transcendental bliss from the spiritual world are pervertedly reflected in this material world, they are certainly the cause of bondage. As long as men feel attracted to women in this material world and women feel attracted to men, the bondage of repeated birth and death will continue. But in the spiritual world, where there is no fear of birth and death, such feelings of separation are the cause of transcendental bliss. So in the spiritual world, Prabhupada is telling us that uh, there is not fear of death. So even if there are feelings of separation, they are transcendental feelings. In the absolute reali reality, there are variety of feelings, varieties of feelings, but all of them are of the same quality of transcendental bliss. So this is the difference between the spiritual world and this material world. We have all kinds of mixed feelings at any given time. But in the spiritual world, all the feelings are one, which is transcendental bliss. And this is why uh, we are reminded again and again in Shastras, our true goal of life. It's not to come back to this Mrityu Lok this samsara again and again, life after life in different species. But we should aim for that spiritual world where we can serve Lord continuously and where we won't have any problems of this material body because we will all be having spiritual body there. And uh, there's only one feeling there which is called the transcendental bliss. The miseries of the bodies are absent because over there you don't have the material body. Verse 18 After Mother Sita entered the earth, Lord Ramchandra observed complete celibacy and performed an uninterrupted Agni Hotra Yagya for 13,000 years. So we should understand that after Sita Devi appeared from this earth, she entered the earth itself. Lord Ramchandra continued with the uninterrupted Agni Hotra Yagya for 13,000 years. Verse 19, after completing the sacrifice, Lord Ramchandra, whose lotus feet were sometimes pierced by thorns when he lived in Dandakaranya, placed those feet in the hearts of those who always think of him. Then he entered his own abode, the vacant planet beyond the Brahmajyoti. Purport, the lotus feet of the Lord are always a subject matter for meditation of devotees. Sometimes when Lord Ramchandra wandered in the forest of Dandakaranya, thorns pricked his lotus feet. The devotees upon thinking of this would faint. The Lord does not feel pain or pleasure from any action or reaction of this material world, but the devotees cannot tolerate even the pricking of their Lord's lotus feet by a thorn. This was the attitude of the gopis when they thought of Krishna wandering in the forest with pebbles and grains of sand pricking his lotus feet. 
This tribulation in the heart of a devotee cannot be understood by karmis, jnanis or yogis. The devotees who could not tolerate even thinking of Lord's lotus feet being pricked by a thorn were again put into tribulation by thinking of Lord's disappearance. For the Lord had to return to his abode after finishing his pastimes in this material world. The word Atma Jyoti is significant. The Brahma Jyoti, which is greatly appreciated by jnanis or monistic philosophers who desire to enter it for liberation, is nothing but the rays of the Lord's body. Yasya Prabha Prabhavato Jagad Anda Koti Kotishva Ashesha Vasudhadi Vibhuti Bhinam Bhinam Tad Brahma Nishkalam Anantam Ashesha Bhutam Govindamadi Purusham Tam Aham Bhajami. I worship Lord Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is endowed with great power. The glowing of effulgence of his transcendental form is the impersonal Brahman, which is absolute, complete and unlimited, and which displays the varieties of countless planets with their different opulences in millions and millions of universe. This is from Brahma Samhita, chapter 5, verse 40. The Brahma Jyoti is the beginning of the spiritual world. And beyond Brahma Jyoti are the Vaikuntha planets. In other words, the Brahma Jyoti stays outside the Vaikuntha planets, just as the sunshine stays outside the sun. To enter the sun planet, one must go through the sunshine. Similarly, when the Lord or his devotees enter the Vaikuntha planets, they go through the Brahma Jyoti. The jnanis or monistic philosophers, because of their impersonal conception of the Lord, cannot enter the Vaikuntha planets. But they also cannot stay eternally in the Brahma Jyoti. Thus, after some time, they fall again to this material world. Aruhya Kricharena Kricharena Param Padam Tataha Padanti Patantya Adho Anadrita Yushmad Angharya Yaha this is from Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 2nd chapter, verse 32. So nobody can just stay in the Brahma Jyoti. You cannot, you cannot just hang in there. You have to fall back into the material world. So our aim should not be Brahma Jyoti unless we want to come back, come back to this material planet. Our aim should be the spiritual world where we can serve Lord uninterruptingly. It might take few lifetimes to reach there. But still, we should be very clear about our goal in our life. What is the goal of our bhakti? The Vaikuntha planets are covered by the Brahma Jyoti and therefore one cannot properly understand what those Vaikuntha planets are unless one is a pure devotee. Verse 20 Lord Ramchandra's reputation for having killed Ravan with showers of arrows at the request of the demigods and for having built a bridge over the ocean, as we know, which is Rameshwaram, which was in Rameshwaram, yes, and uh, at the request of the demigods for having built a bridge over the ocean does not constitute, constitute the factual glory of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Ramchandra, whose spiritual body is always engaged in various pastimes, Lord Ramchandra has no equal or superior and therefore he had no need to take help from the monkeys to gain victory over Ravan. Purport as stated in the Vedas, Shvetashva Avatar Upanishad 6.8 Natasya Karyam Karanam Chavidyate Natat Samash Chabhya Dikshas Dikshas Chadrishyate Parasya Shaktir Vividhaiva Shruyate Subhaviki Gyanabal Kriyacha. The Supreme Lord has nothing to do, and no one is found to be equal to do or greater than Him, for everything is done naturally and systematically by His multifarious energies. The Lord has nothing to do. Natasya Karyam. Karanam cha vidyate. Whatever he does is his pastime. 
or the Leela. The Lord has no duty to perform to oblige anyone. Nonetheless, he appears to act to protect his devotees or kill his enemies. Of course, no one can be the Lord's enemy since who could be more powerful than the Lord? There is actually no question of anyone being his enemy, but when the Lord wants to take pleasure in his pastimes, he comes down to this material world and acts like a human being, thus showing his wonderful, glorious activities to please his devotees. His devotees always want to see the Lord victorious in varied activities and therefore to please himself and them, the Lord sometimes agrees to act as a human being and perform wonderful, uncommon pastimes for the satisfaction of the devotees. Verse 21. Lord Ramchandra's spotless name and fame which vanquish all sinful activities are celebrated in all directions like the ornamental cloth of the victorious elephant that conquers all directions. Great saintly persons like Markande Rishi still glorify his characteristics in the assemblies of great emperors like Maharaj Yudhishthir. Similarly, all the saintly kings and all the demigods including Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma Worship the Lord by bowing down with their helmets. Let me offer my obeisances unto his lotus feet. Verse 22. Lord Ramchandra returned to his abode to which bhakti yogis are promoted. This is the place to which all the inhabitants of the Ayodhya went after they served the Lord in his manifest pastimes by offering him obeisances. Touching his lotus feet, fully observing him like a fa as a father-like king, sitting or lying down with him like equals or even just accompanying him. So all the inhabitants of Ayodhya, when Lord Ch they went to the abode of Lord Ramchandra when he returned to his abode in the spiritual planet, planets, uh, spiritual world, uh, the bhakti yogis, his bhakti, they were also promoted there to serve the Lord. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, I'm going to start the purport of this verse, verse 22 of uh, chapter 11. Lord Ramchandra rules the world, canto 9 of Srimad Bhagavatam. Purport says so. Goes like this. The Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 4.9 Janma karma cha me divyam evam yoveti tatvataha tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mam eti so arjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not upon leaving the body take his birth again in this material world but attains my eternal abode, O Arjun. Here there is confirmed all the inhabitants of Ayodhya who saw Lord Ramchandra as citizens, served him as servants, sat and talked with him as friends or were somehow or other present, present during, the, during his reign, went back home, back to Godhead. After giving up the body, the devotee who becomes perfect in devotional service enters that particular universe where Lord Ramchandra or Lord Krishna is engaged in his pastimes. Then after being trained to serve the Lord in various capacities in that Prakat Leela, the devotee is finally promoted to Sanatan Dham, the supreme abode in the spiritual world. I will repeat because it's very important. All the inhabitants of Ayodhya who saw Lord Ramchandra as citizens, served him as servants, sat and talked with him as friends or were somehow or other present during his reign, went back home, back to Godhead. After giving up the body, the devotee who becomes perfect in devotional service enters that particular universe where Lord Ramchandra or Lord Krishna is engaged in his pastimes. So when Krishna Leela is completed in one universe, it carries on in the other universe. And same with the other Leelas, whether it's Ram Leela or the appearance of the other avatars of Bhagwan. So these Leelas are continuing. The associates, they are serving the Lord in, in continuum. 
Then after being trained to serve the Lord in various capacities in that Prakat Leela, the devotee is finally promoted to Sanatan Dham, the supreme abode in the spiritual world. This Sanatan Dham is also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Paras tasmatu bhavo anyo avyakto avyaktat sanatanaha. One who enters the transcendental pastimes of the Lord is called Nitya Leela Pravishta. To understand clearly why Lord Ramchandra returned, it is mentioned here with that the Lord went to that particular place where the Bhakti Yogis go. The impersonalists understand the statements of Srimad Bhagavatam to mean that the Lord entered his own effulgence and therefore became become impersonal. But the Lord is a person and his devotees are person. Indeed, the living entities like the Lord were persons in the past. They are persons in the present and they will continue to be persons even after giving up the, bo the body. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. So, Lord and his devotees, they are all individual personalities. Verse 23 O King Parikshit, anyone who orally receives the narrations concerning the characteristics of Lord Ramchandra's pastimes will ultimately be freed from the disease of envy and thus be liberated from the bondage of fruitive activities. Purport. Here in this material world, everyone is envious to someone else. Even in religious life, it is sometimes found that if one devotee has advanced in spiritual activities, other devotees are envious of him. Such envious devotees are not completely free from the bondage of birth and death. As long as one is not completely free from the cause of birth and death, one cannot enter the Sanatan Dham or the eternal pastimes of the Lord. One becomes envious because of being influenced by the designations of the body, but the liberated devotee has nothing to do with the body and therefore he is completely on the transcendental platform. A devotee is never envious of anyone, even his enemy. Because the devotee knows that the Lord is his supreme protector, he thinks, what harm can the so-called enemy do? Thus a devotee is confident about his protection. The Lord says, Ye yatha maam prapadyante tam bhajam myaham. According to the proportion of one surrender to me, I respond accordingly. A devotee must therefore be completely free from envy, especially of the other devotees. To envy other devotees is a great offense, a Vaishnav Aparad. A devotee who constantly engages in hearing and chanting Shravan Kirtan is certainly freed from the disease of envy and thus he becomes eligible to go back home, back to Godhead. Verse 24 Maharaj Parikshit inquired from Shukadev Goswami how did Lord conduct himself and how did he behave in relationship with his brothers over expansions of his own self and how did his brothers and the inhabitants of Ayodhya treat him. Verse 25 Shukadev Goswami replied after accepting the throne of the government by the fervent request of his younger brother Bharat, Lord Ramchandra ordered his younger brothers to go out and conquer the entire world while he personally remained in the capital to give audience to all the citizens and residents of the palace and supervise the governmental affairs the governmental affairs where i am i've lost my line now i'm very sorry about this with his other assistants Purport, the Supreme Personality of Godhead does not allow any of his devotees or assistants to be engaged in sense gratification. The younger brothers of Lord Ramchandra were at home enjoying the personal presence of Lord of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but the Lord ordered them to go out and achieve victory all over the world. It was the custom and this, is cust this custom in some places is still current that all the kings would have to accept the supremacy of the emperor. If the king of a small state did not accept the emperor's supremacy, there would be a fight and the king of the small state would be obliged to accept the emperor as supreme. Otherwise, it would not be possible for the emperor to rule the country. 
Lord Ramchandra showed his favor to his brothers by ordering them to go out. Many of the Lord's devotees residing in Vrindavan have taken the vow not to leave Vrindavan to preach Krishna consciousness. But the Lord says that Krishna consciousness should be spread all over the world in every village and every town. This is the open order of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prithvite Ache Yata Yat Nagaradi Gram Sarvatra Prachar Haibe Mura Nam. A pure devotee, therefore, must execute the order of the Lord and must not gratify his senses by remaining stagnant in one place, falsely proud, thinking that because he does not leave Vrindavan but chants in a solitary place, he, he has become a great devotee. A devotee must carry out the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Yare dekha, tarit kaha, Krishna upadesha, every devotee, therefore, should spread Krishna consciousness, by preaching, asking whomever he meets to accept the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Lord says, Sarv dharman maam ekam sharanam braja. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. This is the order of the Lord, who speaks as the Supreme Emperor. Everyone should be induced to accept this order for this victory, Dig Vijay, and it is the duty of the soldier, the devotee, to impress upon everyone the philosophy of life. Of course, those who are Kanisht Adhikaris do not preach, but the Lord shows mercy to them also. He did by staying personally in Ayodhya to give audience to the people in general. One should not mistakenly think that Lord asked his younger brothers to leave Ayodhya because he especially favoured the citizens. The Lord is merciful to everyone and he knows how to show his favour to each individual person according to his capacity. One who abides by the order of the Lord is a pure devotee. Verse 26. During the reign of Lord Ramchandra, the streets of the capital Ayodhya were sprinkled with perfumed water and drops of perfumed liquor thrown about the el by elephants from their trunks. When the citizens saw the Lord personally supervising the affairs of the city in such opulence, they appreciated this opulence very much. Purport, we have simply heard about the opulence of Ram Rajya during the reign of Lord Ramchandra. Now here is one example of the opulence of Lord's kingdom. The streets of Ayodhya were not only clean but also sprinkled with perfumed water and drops of perfumed liquor which were distributed by elephants through their trunks. There was no need of sprinkling machines for the elephant has a natural ability to suck the water through his trunk and again throw it out in a shower. We can understand the opulence of the city from this one example. It was actually sprinkled with perfumed water. Moreover, the citizens had the opportunity to see the Lord personally supervising the affair, affairs of the state. He was not a sleeping monarch. As we understand from his activities in sending his brothers to see the affairs outside the capital and punish anyone who did not obey the emperor's order. This is called Digvijay. The citizens were all given facilities for peaceful life and they were also qualified with appropriate attributes according to Varnashram. As we have seen from the previous chapter, Varnashram Gunanvitaha, the citizens were trained according to the Varnashram system. A class of men were Brahmins, a class of men were Kshatriyas, a class was, were Vaishyas and a class were Shudras. Without this scientific division, there can be no question of good citizenship. The king being magnanimous and perfect in his duty performed many sacrifices and treated the citizens as his sons. And the citizens being trained in Varnashram system were obedient and perfectly ordered. The entire monarchy was so opulent and peaceful that the government was even able to sprinkle the street with perfumed water What to speak of the other management. Since the city was sprinkled with perfumed water, we can simply imagine how opulent it was in other respects. Why should the citizens not have felt happy during the reign of Lord Ramchandra? Verse 27 the palaces, the palace gates, the assembly houses, the platforms for meeting palace places, the temples and all such places were decorated with golden water pots and bedecked with various types of flags. Verse 28. 
wherever Lord Ramchandra visited, auspicious welcome gates were constructed. With banana trees and betel nut trees full of flowers and fruits. The gates were decorated with various flags made of colorful cloth and with tapestries, mirrors and garlands. Verse 29 Whenever, Wherever Lord Ramchandra visited, the people approached him with paraphernalia of worship and begged the Lord's blessings. O Lord, they said, as you rescued the earth from the bottom of the sea in your incarnation as a boar, May you now maintain it, thus we beg your blessings. Verse 30 Thereafter, not having seen the Lord for a long time, the citizens, both men and women, being very eager to see him, left their homes and got up on the roofs of the palaces, being incompletely satiated with seeing the face of the lotus-eyed Lord Ramchandra, they showered flowers upon him. Verses 31 to 34 now. Translation, therefore, Thereafter, Lord Ramchandra entered the palace of his forefathers. Within the palace were various treasures and valuable wardrobes. The sitting places on the two sides of the entrance door were made of coral. The yards were surrounded by the pillars of Vaidurya Mani. The flower was made of highly polished Markat Mani and the foundation was made of marble. The entire palace was decorated with flags and garlands and bedecked with valuable stones shining with celestial effulgence. The palace was fully decorated with pearls and surrounded by lamps and incense. The men and women within the palace all resembled demigods and were decorated with various ornaments which seemed beautiful because of being placed on their bodies. Verse 35 Lord Ramchandra, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, chief of the best learned scholars, resided in that palace with his pleasure potency, Mother Sita, and enjoyed complete peace. Verse 36. Without transgressing the religious principles, Lord Ramchandra, whose lotus feet are worshipped by devotees in meditation, enjoyed with all the paraphernalia of transcendental pleasure for as long as he needed as needed, thus ends end the Bhakti Vidhan purports of the ninth canto, eleventh chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Lord Ramchandra Rules the World. Now there is another chapter, chapter 12 in this canto, the dynasty of Kush, the son of Lord Ramchandra, and it's only 16 verses in total, so I will go through them as well. This chapter describes the dynasty of Kush. The son of Lord Ramchandra, the members of this dynasty are descendants of Shashad, the son of Maharaj Ikshvaku. Following in the genealogical table of Lord Ramchandra's dynasty, Kush, the Lord's son, was followed consecutively by Atithi, Nishad, Nab, Nabha, not Nab, sorry, Nabha, Pundarik, Shemad, Shema Dhanva, Dhanva, Devanika, Aniha, Aniha, Pariyatra, Balasthala, Vajranabha, Sagana and Vidriti. These personalities ruled the world. From Vidriti came Hiranyabha, who later became the disciple of Jaimini and propounded the system of mystic yoga in which Yajnavalkya was initiated. Following in this dynasty was Varpushpa, Dhruvasandhi, Sudarshan, Agni Varna, Sigra, Shigra and Maru. Maru attained full perfection in the practice of yoga and he still lives in the village of Kalap. At the end of this age of Kali, he will revive the dynasty of Sun God. I'll repeat, Maru attained full perfection in the practice of yoga and he still lives in the village of Kalap. At the end of this age of Kali, he will revive the dynasty of Sun God. Next in the dynasty were Parsu Shruta, Sandhi, Amarshan, Mahaswan, Vishwabahu, Prasenajit, Takshak and Brihadbal, who was later killed by Abhimanyu. 
Shukadev Goswami said that these were all kings who had passed away. The future descendants of Vridbal will be Brihadrana, Urukriya, Vatsvridha, Prativyom, Bhanu, Divak, Sahadev, Brihadashva, Bhanuman, Pratikashva, Supratika, Marudev, Sunakshatra, Pushkara, Antariksh, Sutapa, Amit, Amitra, Amitrajit, Amitrajit, Bhridraj, Barhi, Kritanjay, Rananjay, Sanjay, Shakya, Subodh, Suddhodha, not Subodh, sorry, Suddhodha, Langla, Prasenajit, Kshudraka, Ranaka, Suratha and Sumitra. All of them will become kings one after the other. Sumitra coming in this age of Kali will be the last king in the Ikshvaku dynasty. After him, the dynasty will be extinguished. Verse 1 of chapter 12, the dynasty of Kush, the son of Lord Ramchandra. Translation. Shukadev Goswami said, the son of Ramchandra was Kush, the son of Kush was Atiti, son of Atiti was Nishad and the son Nishad. Nishad, not sorry, Nishad, it was Nishad and the son of Nishad was Nab. The son of Nab was Pundarik and from Pundarik came a son named Kshema Dhanva. Verse 2, the son of Kshema Dhanva was Devanika, Devanika's son was Aniha, Aniha's son was Pariyatra and Pariyatra's son was Balasthala. The son of Balasthala was Vajranab who was said to have been born from the effulgence of sun god. Verses 3 and 4. Translation, the son of Vajranab was Sagana and his son was Vidriti. The son of Vidriti was Hiranyabha who became disciple of Jaimini and became a great Acharya of mystic yoga. It is from Hiranyabha that the great saint Yajnavalkya learned, sorry, learned the highly elevated system of mystic yoga known as Adhyatma Yoga, which can loosen the thoughts, sorry, loosen the knots of material attachment in the in the heart. Verse five, the son of Hiranyabha was Pushpa, and the son of Pushpa was Dhruva Sandhi. The son of Dhruva Sandhi was Sudarshan whose son was Agnivarn, the son of Agnivarn was named Shigra and his son was Maru. Verse 6, having achieved perfection in the power of mystic yoga, Maru still lives in a place known as Kalpa, Kalapagram. At the end of Kali Yuga, he will revive the lost Surya dynasty by begetting a son. Purport, at least 5,000 years ago, Srila Shukadev Goswami asserted the existence of Maru in the Kalap Gram and said that Maru, having achieved a Yoga Siddhi body, would continue to exist until the end of Kali Yuga, which is calculated to continue for 432,000 years. Such is the perfection of mystic power. By controlling the breath, the perfect Yogi can continue his life for as long as he likes. Sometimes we hear from the Vedic literature that some personalities from the Vedic age such as Vyasadeva and Ashwatthama are still living. Here we understand that Maru is also still living. We are sometimes surprised that mortal body can live for such a long time. The explanation of this longevity is given here by the word Yoga Siddha. If one becomes perfect in the practice of yoga, he can live as long as he likes. The demonstration of some trifling Yoga Siddha does not constitute perfection. Here is the factual example of perfection. A yoga siddha can live as long as he likes. Verse 7. From Maru was born a son named Parsu Shruta. From Parsu Shruta came Sandhi. From Sandhi came Amarshan. And from Amarshan a son named Mahaswan. From Mahaswan Vishubahu took his birth. From Vishubahu came son named Prasenajit and from Prasenajit came Takshak and from Takshak came Brihadbal who was killed in a fight by your father Parikshit is being told and Parikshit's father was Abhimanyu the son of Arjuna 
verse 9. All these kings in the dynasty of Ikshvaku have passed away. Now please listen as I describe the kings who will be born in the future. From Brihadbala will come Brihadrana. The son of, verse 10, the son of Brihadrana will be Urukriya who will have a son named Vatsavridha and Vatsavridha will have a son named Prativyom and Prativyom will have a son named Banu and from whom Divaka, a great commander of soldier, will take birth. Of soldiers will take birth. Verse 11. Thereafter from Divaka will come a son named Sahadev and from Sahadev a great hero from Bridashva named from Bridashva will come Bhanuman and from Bhanuman will come Pratikashva and the son of Pratikashva will be Supratika. Verse 12. Thereafter from Supratika will come Marudev from Marudev Sunakshatra from Sunakshatra Pushkar and from Pushkar Antariksh the son of Antariksh will be Sutapa and his son will be Am Amitra Amitrajit. Verse 13 From Amitrajit will come a son named Bridraj, from Bridraj will come Barhi and from Barhi will come Kritanjay, the son of Kritanjay will be known as Rananjay and from him will come a son named Sanjay. Verse 14, from Sanjay will come Shakya, from Shakya will come Shudodha and from Shudodha will come Langla, from Langla will come Prasenajit and from Prasenajit Kshudraka. Kshudraka. Verse 15 which is the last verse of this, uh, no, sorry not the last, the second last verse. From Kshudraka will come Ranaka, from Ranaka will come Suratha and from Suratha will come Sumitra ending the dynasty. This is a description of the dynasty of Brihadbal verse 16 which is the last verse of this chapter the dynasty of Kush. The last king in the dynasty of Ikshvaku will be Sumitra. After Sumitra there will be no more sons in the dynasty of the sun god and thus the dynasty will end. Thus end the Bhakti Vedant purports of the 9th canto 12th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Dynasty of Kush, the son of Lord Ramchandra. I hope you all had a beautiful festival of Ram Nami yesterday. Thank you for joining. I wish you all a blissful day ahead. Please chat and be happy and uh, Look after your health, Look up, follow all the guidelines and regulations of your local governments and authorities. We can't be complacent even if we had both the doses of the vaccinations because it is still not gone. It's still uh, troubling people around the world. Thank you for joining. Hariyam Tatsat. Hare Krishna.